Welcome to week two. Uh, it's going to be a big change of pace uh, compared to last week. I hope you had a blast uh, last week uh, with all those wonderful tutorials assembled by the week one team. Uh, I know it may have been a bit overwhelming for some of you. It's a lot of content. It's very intensive. Uh, but for the next three weeks, uh, the pace in terms of tutorials is going to slow down dramatically. Uh, you're going to have uh, every day, several hours in the morning, several hours in the afternoon to really just dig into the material and um, make it yours, get, get familiar with it. So we've got the schedule on Google Calendar, at least for me, it displays correctly. I know that uh, Samuel has still been struggling a little bit with his. It looks like uh, Google is not necessarily uh, propagating the updates as fast as uh, the brand as school team. But here uh, it looks like uh, we essentially start every morning by a little uh, tutorial, or at least a, a large group call like this one. Uh, there are some tutorials listed in the in the calendar. I think we're still going to adjust a, a few a few things uh, about it. I'm going to talk into uh, uh, in a minute about the format of those tutorials. But right after that, you'll generally have two hours of, of free time, free hacking time. So that means that you're going to be working on your project, making progress. There's going to be some structure and some. Uh, we're going to ask a number of things from you. So hopefully that's going to help you sort of focus your work. Um, but you'll be by yourself and there won't be necessarily activities on, online. Um, so we still for lunch have our system with a donut pairing and you, you're free to uh, connect with other uh, students over lunch to get to know them. And the, in the afternoon, uh, we, we start the afternoon with the two hour block of uh, student and mentor sessions, so-called uh, project clinics. So that I'm gonna explain to you a little bit more how, how it works, but you won't necessarily spend two hours on the Zoom. I think at most, it would be more like an hour and a half. And we're gonna do our best to schedule all of that very uh, smoothly, but during that time, there's gonna be probably dozens of Zoom calls organized by small groups. So it's gonna be a, a little bit of, uh, of a chaos, but um, we, we think we have a system and uh, we're gonna see if it works. Uh, of course, this is, usually we do this, you know, everybody's physically in the same room, so it's pretty easy to uh, organize those things. But here through Zoom, we, Zoom and, and Slack, we, we should be able to, to put it off. And then the rest of, of the afternoon, once again, is, uh, is uh, more or less open. Uh, we've got yoga here and there to give you a little break. Uh, it's always good to get re-energized, but hopefully late morning, late afternoon, you've got a, a block of free time. And really, if you feel like I'm most effective early in the morning, uh, feel free to just skip the tutorials. They are not really useful. Uh, you should definitely not feel like week one, you need it to be there. As of week two, if you want to skip the tutorial, please, by all means, just do it. Uh, if you feel like you're most productive in early afternoon, you're weird. Uh, like, like the vast majority of people eat at lunch and then they're asleep. So that's why we have meetings at this time. Uh, <laughs> those are your least uh, productive hours. Um, so that's it. Uh, so it's a fairly simple schedule. Uh, yeah. Um, we just see the, your main screen uh, on Chrome and not the slides themselves. You see my main screen on Chrome and not the slides themselves. This is a huge problem. Uh, is, does this work better? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's just unfortunate that I cannot have full, full screen slides. Anyway, I learned how to use Zoom properly by the end of the school. Of, of, yeah, of we work on that. Uh, so yeah, uh, work schedule. Now you, you see what I'm talking about. Uh, that schedule is going to be uh, duplicated essentially for week three and week four. So that, you know, it's, it's the beginning of this week is like a new world starting, completely different pace. But hopefully that's not going to repeat every week. So there's going to be a couple exceptions to that schedule, obviously. 
Uh, on Thursday, we're going to have the project presentations in the evening, in the afternoon. Uh, I'm going to tell you uh, about that. But they are scheduled where normally we have the project clinics, so they don't necessarily change too much of your habit. You're, you're going to have some Zoom calls uh, early afternoon, basically on Thursday, as usual. And on Friday, uh, there won't be necessarily project clinics. We're going to try to build teams. So if you have collaborative projects, we're going to establish those groups on the Friday afternoon. So essentially, there are variants of the project clinic ideas, just a different format, uh, basically. All right, so that's kind of the overall like summary uh, of the schedule. Now we're going to dig into all of these and see exactly what's the structure, what's expected from you. Um, in terms of the tutorials, uh, I've seen there's been lots of requests for additional tutorials. People are eager to learn uh, about new things. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a bit cautious here because the truth is that by doing your project, you're going to learn about those things. So you need to keep some time open for this. So I think what's very important is that instead of, of, of giving you like a set list of tutorials that are going to block the full schedule for the rest of the three weeks, that you're proactive at finding resources and we help you uh, finding resources. So on the brainhack.org channel, there's a, a number of playlists for past events. So you have about 80 uh, presentation from Brenak 101, uh, some of which are of excellent quality. Now those are uh, community driven events. So the quality of the videos is going to change radically depending on who recorded them and when. But uh, you have tons of content there uh, and you have a few other channels uh, from other events, including the Brenac School we're adding now. Now those are only a few of the resources obviously uh, available uh, to use with the internet. But the idea is more for you to sort of find those resources. So we're going to be pointing you uh, to, to, to them or to some of them. We're also uh, going to organize some Q&A. So if you've watched a, a, a video, you'll be able to uh, discuss with the person who gave the video if you, if you have questions. But there's no point you know, organizing a Zoom presentation so the person just redoes the same presentation again. Just watch the video and then we have an interactive session with the, with the speaker. So that's that, uh, one hour every morning, kind of organized by the school, but otherwise uh, you, you can definitely go and, and, and read more. So in terms of the project clinics, uh, the project clinics, there's going to be uh, uh, two, two separate types, the clinics with your, uh, an instructor, so it's going to follow your work, and a clinic with a, a team of peers that are going to help you. So first with the instructors, we're going to have a pairing between each one of you and one instructor. And for the next three days at least, uh, you're going to meet with that person uh, for up to half an hour, one on one. So there's a, uh, we're going to create kind of two groups of students. Uh, one group, we are have those instructor meeting between one and two, and the other group, we have those instructor meeting between two and three. Now, we, the exact time is going to depend. Uh, we're, we have this table. Uh, I'll get to that uh, a bit later. So it will be either at 1 or 1.30 or either at 2 or 2.30. Um, but it's a bit of an organizational challenge because we, we have to do all those like uh, link, linkage between uh, instructor and students. And we're trying to do them based on your interest. And we needed to wait now to know what your interests are. So, because now you've gone through all the tutorials during week one. So that's why we're going to do all those pairings this morning. It's going to be a bit stressful, but it's going to work. Uh, the other types of uh, project clinics are the peer project clinic. So the same way we're going to assign you to an instructor, we're also going to assign you to small teams. And again, we're going to try to build those teams based on your interest and also based on your backgrounds. So when you register to the school, you, you filled out a lot of information, which we have. So again, this morning, we're going to be really busy trying to you know, build good teams for week one. Uh, those meetings are going to happen between one and two for group B and between two and three for group A. Uh, you'll be able to organize the meetings yourself. 
uh, Slack has this feature where you can create video calls. So it's very easy. It won't go through Zoom. It could go through the, through the Slack uh, web web tool, and uh, you you you'll just have the list of of, uh, of of people in your team through that table we're, we're gonna share. And then you'll be just self-organized. Um, so, you know, the point of, the, of those meetings is really to uh, learn more about what others do and sort of start getting feedback and, and helping each other. Uh, the meeting can last up to one hour, but hopefully, obviously it's up to the team to decide if after 15 minutes they feel like they are done for the day, you know, that's your call. Um, now, what exactly uh, are you trying to achieve during this week? Because it's not, I mean, you can start working on your project, you can start trying to do things, uh, and that's uh, useful because uh, then you, you learn more uh, if what you had in mind makes sense or not. But really, at this stage, you're not aiming to achieve something that will go in your final report. The main questions you're trying to answer are which tools is that that you want to learn? Uh, you've heard about a ton of them. Maybe some of them you already knew, like GitHub, but I'm pretty sure that even those tools, there's lots that you don't know about. GitHub is incredibly complex uh, and can actually be uh, too, too complex <laughs> sometimes. So, uh, I'm, it's up to you to really think about what is it I want to invest time in uh, for, for the next couple of weeks. What data are you going to use? Uh, there's lots of options out there. I know many people who come to Brenac schools, they want to work on the project of their PhD, say, or their master thesis. And that's fine. You can definitely do that. That's actually, that's great. The only thing, keep in mind that if you do that, the objective is to learn the tool and not to advance your project. You're following a, a course and that time is protected to work on the course and on the tools related to the course and not your project. You, you'll have time to do that later. Uh, but there's also lots of open data you can use. So you don't have to use data from your own project. And maybe that's an opportunity to see how other people organize their data, what are the best practices, and that's gonna give you ideas about what you could do for the data of your own project moving forward. Also, what kind of deliverables you want to implement. At the end of the day, you're going to have to write a report and share with us a number of things. What are those things? That can be just a markdown document describing what you do. They can be a video. They can be notebooks. They can be a blog post. They can be whatever, a website. It's uh, totally up to you. Uh, so related to the deliverables, exactly what kind of medium you want to use to present the results. So if, if it's a notebook, maybe you're just going to dump it into a GitHub repository, but maybe you want to create a, a binder hub link. Uh, maybe you want it to be on Google Colab. Maybe you want to assemble maybe the uh, notebook to create what's called a Jupyter book. Uh, there's lots of options out there in terms of like how you can format your results. And hopefully by the end of week one, you have a pretty good idea of actually what is it you want to, to achieve. So really at, at a conceptual level, this is what, what expected for this week. Now, we, we've given a bit more of structures through the evaluation to try to help you answer all those questions. Um, now, in terms of, uh, of what it may look like at the end of the day, uh, a good starting point would be to look at the project from last year. So I've put here the URL of the Brenac School 2019. Um, it's an organization, a GitHub organization. And under there, there's a number of repos. And each repo is typically uh, the project of one student of the Brenac School. So you see last year, we had 33 participants. Uh, it was much smaller than this year. But you still have lots of examples of projects, most of them being of of, of really high quality. Now, it's going to vary depending on the project or how much of presentations and documentation you have. But essentially, everything related to this project, whether it's code or, or the reports and everything, are, are located on, the, uh, on there. So the reason why we don't have just a Brenac School organization and we keep adding to it 
is that we, we want to make sure we can have a, co a nice uh, collection uh, like that. Uh, so we separate, we create a new organization every year. Uh, also, I have invited uh, Isabel Sima, who was a student uh, last year uh, at the school, to just come and, and give us a, a brief talk this morning. So we know a little bit what she did and uh, hopefully it's going to give you a, a better idea of what your project may look like. So I don't know if Isabel has joined the call. Yes. Morning, Isabel. Thanks so much for joining us. It's wonderful. So uh, I, I think I'm just going to stop sharing my screen now. And uh, if you're OK, you can maybe uh, give us your presentation now. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm going to try to share my screen. Let's see if that works. <laughs> it should. Uh, it's a normal Zoom call, so there's no really like anybody can uh, jump in. The call. OK, Let's see if I can yeah. present my slides. Can everyone see my slides? Yeah, cool. It's working. So I usually can't do it on other programs. It's cool. It's working. Uh, so I first want to apologize, everyone. I'm just recovering from COVID. So I still have my COVID brain. So if I ever have a brain fart, I'll blame it on the virus. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to give you an outline of what I did last year. It'll be like what my experience was. Also, uh, give you a bit of context where I started, where I ended with my project and with my skills. So basically, the goal of my project, well, my goal was to learn how to do uh, machine learning analysis, like in general, use different algorithms. Uh, what was the whole like pipeline of a machine learning project? Um, and I also wanted to see if I can uh, use different modalities of neural activity within the same, um, within the same model and compare different uh, modalities of resting state activity um, between each other, basically compare different models. So uh, the whole idea was to see if I could use different features of resting state activity to predict age. So basically, I started with um, the script that we used during the machine learning tutorial that we had last year. That thing was created by Jake, if I'm correct. And basically, I kind of started with that one, and I kind of modified it and created different, um, like four different scripts. Uh, I actually created three scripts, but and you modified a little bit what, the one Jake used. So um, Isabel, I'm going to uh, interrupt just a minute to say yes. that, yes, Jake has done his tutorial again this year. Ah, cool. And it is a wonderful starting point. It, it really, it actually, that tutorial has been designed to be a starting point for projects. So we anticipate that a lot of students will be in the position a bit like you. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted folks to have uh, materials they could immediately build upon. So it's a, a generalizable idea. Yeah, no, really, it was an amazing script to start from. As you'll see in a minute, like, I didn't have any skills to start with, so it was amazing to be able to build on that. Um, so, um, yeah, and I apologize. I do have a Jurassic Park theme presentation from last year. Uh, I guess, like, towards the end of the, <laughs> of the school, I was getting a bit tired and a little bit, like, crazy. So, yeah, there's going to be dinosaurs in my presentation. Um, so, yeah, so... To give a little bit of background about myself, so uh, I'm a PhD student in forensic psychology at Ontario Tech University. Um, and so my thesis is not about predicting age, it's about predicting something else, but I still wanted to learn skills that could apply in my thesis. And so before uh, joining the school, um, my skills were kind of limited to, I could like adapt some MATLAB scripts, but I couldn't really write them from scratch. Um, I mostly work with uh, fMRI data and I was use mostly using SPM and toolboxes some more more like GUI based um, programs uh, which I was finding frustrating it was kind of frustrating because it's kind of limiting uh, you're kind of bound by the limits of what the program can do so I want to explore different options to be able to take data outside of that, that black box and do my own analysis and I've, I've been to several intro to Python workshops but it was not sticking like I need something more to really develop my skills so given my um, skills that I had before brain hack, this was my reaction after the first week. Uh, a little bit scared, a little bit overwhelmed, but I was like, I can, I can do this. <laughs> I need to, I, I'm gonna trust the process. Cause like Pierre kept telling us that like, it's gonna be fine. You're gonna learn by practice. I'm like, I'm gonna trust the process here. So basically the whole concept what I was trying to do um, is what well, we know that for example, like, Apps like FaceApp uses different features of the face to predict 
uh, how your face is going to look in the future. So basically, my idea was to see, can we do the same thing with the brain? Can we um, use different features of the brain to predict your age? And apps like FaceApp basically use different parts of your face, not just your nose, for example. It's a combination of features. Uh, so basically, I was trying to see which combination of features would be most predictive of um, our age based on our uh, neural activity. Um, so the first step basically to do that was find exactly which features to use. Um, so that was kind of what I wanted to do, find which features are most useful. Uh, so first of all, I started, I used, didn't use my own data. I used an open data set uh, from Open Neuro. Uh, so they had 155 participants with age ranging from three to nine years of age. And I only use resting state data. Um, so in terms of which features or which modalities the resting state activity to use, I decided to use ones I was comfortable with already. Uh, I was already going to develop like three different machine learning scripts, so I didn't want to also learn a new feature of neural activity. Uh, so basically what I decided to use is the features I use in my own thesis that I already know well. So I used uh, time series, so basically the activity in different voxels of the brain in time, uh, functional connectivity, and um, uh, fractional amplitude of low frequency fluctuation, or FALF, that's the acronym I'm going to use here, basically the ratio to low to high frequency um, during resting state. So that's the three uh, different modalities I, start, I decided to work with. So basically, the idea was to um, build one model per uh, modality, uh, and also a fourth model that would combine all my modalities together. Uh, so, and for that, I use the super vector aggressor algorithm. Uh, as I previously mentioned, I also use Jake's uh, amazing tutorial. I modified it a little bit, but mostly kept it intact. Uh, and then I created uh, scripts based also on that uh, initial uh, script by Jake to, uh, for my other, uh, my other modalities. Uh, yeah, as you can see, there's already a huge red flag <laughs> in my project. The fact that you can see a feature size of my different knowledge that I use are super unequal. Uh, like the time series is huge compared to uh, the, the other ones. Uh, so that's something that I could change from that project would be to probably do a PCA analysis, a data reduction on the time series, and then apply the template to the other modalities to have a bit more equal um, features to work with among my different algorithms, but that's, I mean, hindsight. <laughs> but yeah, that's something that I would have changed on that for sure. Um, yeah, so basically I create all these, uh, the first step of, uh, the idea was to have the same, use the same algorithms, but uh, in each model, but just change the features to be able to compare, uh, compare the different models of resting state activity. So, the, so I decided to use the same algorithm for each of my scripts. Um, and first step was to do a model optimization to find the best model on my training data to use on my test data. So uh, I tried different type of model optimization to find the best one. Uh, started with uh, SVR with tenfold cross validation, then age log transform, then performed grid search, uh, validation curve, and the last step, which I probably should have kept, was to do a feature reduction using PCA. And uh, the one that was most predictive, my training data was uh, using NSVR with tenfold cause violation and uh, log transforming age. Um, so that's the, the, the algorithm that uh, is being used in all of my models. Then the other step was to create this kind of combined um, model that would uh, predict age using my three different resting state modalities. And that was kind of a headache at the beginning to try and find the best way to combine those. So I did a bit of research uh, on how to do that. And I came across this kind of attractive solution uh, that was using a voting regressor. Uh, the idea being to compare the models and find the one that was the best, basically. However, that didn't apply. I quickly realized that it didn't apply for me because uh, here my goal was not to compare different algorithms, but to compare the predictive abilities of each modality. So I was using the same algorithms, um, and I just want to compare how um, how if it would be basically most predictive if I joined together all my modalities. So instead, I decided to create what I call my mega feature, which basically I concatenated uh, all of my different um, all my features together in this huge matrix to see if combining all the different modalities of resistance activity would be more predictive. 
Um, yeah, so basically, result time. <laughs> Um, basically, it's, uh, it might have not worked as I wanted uh, in retrospect. So the most predictive features was functional collectivity with an accuracy of almost uh, 80%. And the least predictive was the power spectra metric. Uh, and then uh, time series or combining all metrics together had a similar accuracy of about 50%. Uh, so again, one bias that I had was uh, my features were very unequal um, in size. So that could have been a huge bias that I had. In retrospect, I would have changed that. Uh, but basically, yeah, I was pretty impressed. I was able to create all those models with the time that I had and <laughs> to learn those skills that, that was, yeah, I was pretty impressed with that. Uh, so I didn't have time to do everything that I wanted uh, this project, more stuff that I wanted to do, uh, but my initial project was already pretty ambitious. So it's very normal that I have time to finish everything. So basically uh, another thing I want to do is to also statistically compare the performance of the four models. Uh, so we see there's a difference. We also want to see if it's actually like significant, the difference between the predictive abilities of the models. I also want to see within each uh, modality of resistance activity, which um, part of the brain would be most predictive of H. Uh, so within each model where the predictive uh, ability was, uh, and I didn't have time to do that. And I also want to clean my Jupyter notebook. I still haven't done that. I apologize to everyone who's gonna look at my scripts. Um, let me know if there's any confusion. Psst, shoot me an email. I, I'm very sorry, I really meant to do that. Uh, so basically that's all the skills that I've used um, for my for this project. So uh, I was able to um, use different array of different libraries and uh, learn different uh, computing skills uh, in those four weeks. Uh, so a huge change from how I started brain hack and how I ended in terms of my skills. And uh, beyond that, uh, I also learned other skills that go beyond like just being able to code and program. Um, basically, I had to create my own script to uh, do my uh, FALF, uh, to calculate my FALF metric based on power spectra. There was no clear part line, so I built my own code that is available in my GitHub repo. That was a huge win for me. I've never rewrote script uh, from scratch. Uh, I learned the hard way how to uh, keep in mind the shape of your array because I had many issues with my matrix and being in the right like, direction and to flip matrices. Like, the whole thing would crash because of that. So that's something I learned the hard way. Um, keep in mind the size of your array. Uh, also, um, Google saved my life many times. Uh, you're going to spend a lot of time on Google. That's, I think, coding is majority time is Googling. Yeah. <laughs> also, uh, don't be shy to ask your communities. There's times where I would be stuck on a program for days when if I just asked someone from uh, on Slack uh, from the those person in BrainHack or my TAs, it would be solved in like a few minutes, whereas I had spent days on it. So you have all the resources that you need to really use them. It's Everyone's going to be super happy to help you. Um, OK, so that was it for me. Uh, if you guys have any questions about how it was to do the project or anything, feel free to ask away. Thanks so much, uh, Isabel. That's uh, wonderful. Uh, actually, I think this is just your slides from last year, right? You haven't changed them. Uh, I no, yeah, not really. <laughs> so that's great. So that's the kind of that's an example of a sort of end of brain hack school presentation uh i i shall say like a you know a high quality one uh but oh, thank you i i, I <laughs> definitely amazing isabel but there was lots of presentations of high caliber uh la last year like i didn't pick you know the one outlier uh, amazing presentation amazing experience I, I should say that lots of students have uh, had somewhat compatible uh, uh, level of productivity. So that's what we're striving for. We'll see you know, uh, how far we can go and how many of you can really uh, benefit fully of this journey. But I, I'm hoping that this example gives you a, a better idea of, uh, of uh, what it could look like. Uh, Isabel, are you going to be able to come back? Uh, yes. That's wonderful. So I, I had invited, so Isabel is going to come back on week four to tell us a little bit more about uh, how she's been able to use those skills following Brain Hack School, because this was really very much focused on 
what happened during Bernard school. And I'm really uh, a little bit uh, nervous because actually I have no idea if uh, Isabel <laughs> ended up using what she learned. <laughs> I'm confident enough, I kind of feel like she must have. So hopefully that's going to be a good presentation. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the truth is that I have not checked prior to inviting her. I've also uh, um, uh, invited Lisa Levitis uh, to, to come tell us a, a little bit uh, about her, her journey because uh, Lisa has become really active in the community uh, for the HBM hackathon. So I, I'm pretty sure she's going to have uh, lots to tell us about that. So uh, I think we're going to resume with the, the slides. Uh, unless there are questions for Isabel, like don't, don't hesitate. Uh, we've got the chat. So you can either uh, you know, raise your hands and activate your microphones and just speak or, or type in the chat. Uh, so Liz says, thank you, really cool work. I agree, <laughs> so, but that's not a question. But you can definitely give comments as well. So. Okay, so I'm going to resume with the, with the slides I, I have. Uh, here we go. Mm. So we'll see you uh, early June, Isabel. Perfect. Uh, I, I mean, June? It, you're, you're more than welcome if you want to stay uh, <laughs> and listen to the rest of the presentation. But you don't have to really. Well, I can stay for rest. I want people to have questions. And also, like, of course, I miss Spring Hack. I had so much fun. So yeah, I can stay for a little bit today. Awesome, awesome. All right, so that was for Brain Hack 2019. So Isabel's projects on there. Uh, there there's other, other ones. Uh, we're trying to, to uh, make a, a better web browser project this year. But for now, uh, there's another repo which is empty. So that's github.com Brain Hack School 2020. Uh, you will notice that the brains change colors with the year. So 2019 was a purple year, a uh, very sur slightly surreal year. Uh, and this year is uh, uh, yellow and red because uh, red is danger. And 2020 has been a, a danger year so far. So this is our, our year color uh, theme. So currently there's only one repo in that organization, one lonely repo, which is a project template. There's also very few people on there because they're only instructors. So our mission is that by the end of the day, uh, that organization is actually filled with students and filled with new projects. And we're gonna start with, uh, with, from the project template and maybe actually I can uh, show, show it to you a, a, a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you, if you see now the... Yes, we see the GitHub page. Okay, awesome. So if I click on it, what I have is a Markdown document, uh, which is a readme file. And that readme file uh, actually sort of explain what your uh, project uh, definition uh, should be. And uh, it starts with a little summary, then a background. In the background, you can also tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're coming from, which... Um, so the, the exercise that uh, Sam has decided we should do is that we, we, we uh, treated the project template as a Brenac project. So it's a project on a project. So it's a meta, meta uh, Brenac uh, Project. So here you have the background of Brenac and why we need a project template. Uh, then you have a list of the tools you want to use. So for the Brenac template, we use Markdown. We use also a Hugo website that we're going to be able to put the Markdown is in. Uh, I'm going to explain in a minute. Uh, the data, uh, in that case, the data is generated by all the students uh, because we're going to have, at the end of the day, we're going to have a very nice project gallery. Um, a list of the deliverables. Uh, what exactly the project is going to create? So in that case, we want actually a template that people can use, and that's what I'm showing uh, to you right now. Down the road, we also have the gallery built with the template, and uh, we also prepared some instructions 
uh, to explain to people how to put this type of uh, markdown description into our website. Uh, in terms of the results, uh, well, so far we've got the template and I'm sharing it with you uh, today. Uh, we, we also have a, a, a little uh, documentation. Now, if you go on the website under documents, there's a projects, uh, new projects tab uh, that points to that template and uh, also explain a little bit more about um, uh, how we're going to grade the projects ultimately. Um, so a little bit about what uh, what uh, we, we learned doing these projects and an overview of the of the results for the different variables. So that second part of you see the results part you're going to work on for week four, and the first half, which is the project definition part, is what you need to fill this this week. So basically, this morning, what we need you to do is going to be we're going to invite you to that organization. You're going to create your repo and you're going to create your readme.md file. You can just copy paste that document and start filling it with your information. So it's going to be hopefully fairly uh, straightforward and smooth and you shouldn't be uh, too lost about what, what is required. Um, so that's that. that. Uh, I think I've already started explaining actually uh, qu quite a bit of what's coming in the next slides. Uh, so just making a, a short break here because uh, uh, Sam has uh, started a poll because uh, we're a little bit curious. Some people have very specific ideas about what they want to work on and uh, based on the live updates, uh, those people are a small minority. <laughs> Actually, it's only two people so far. Um, but for those who either have no idea what they want to work on or are lost, uh, please do not panic. Uh, as you see, we're, we, we have a number of, uh, of tools to try to structure your work and help you make progress. And this afternoon, you're gonna have a chance to discuss with instructors and peers and try to figure things out. So you're not left by yourself in any shape or form. Um, so that was fast. In terms of the evaluation, um, there is, for those taking obviously the, the, the course for credits, uh, this week is count for 10% of the final grade. And that's split into two half. The first half is that markdown project description. Um, you know, the, the description is uh, in the, the template is rather short. Uh, hopefully you can expand a little bit more uh, than that, but it doesn't have to be very complicated either. So I, I, I should say that as long as you're, you know, and filling correctly all the sections, it's, it should be fairly easy to get those points. But uh, the other half, we have a, a few little exercises for you. You're gonna have to open three GitHub issues uh and discuss uh, uh, uh well you need three github issues open on your repo by other participants and you need to discuss with them about those issues and uh, the the way you can achieve that is through those project clinics we're setting up right we're assembling little teams so you're gonna have a chance to chat but the idea is to not just you know talk about it but also have a written trail of those exchanges and all those discussions and uh, GitHub is a wonderful tool to do that. Actually, GitHub is a full project management, management, management tool. You can create timeline, you can create roadmaps, you can create issues, uh, to-do list. Uh, it's pretty wonderful. So we, we want you to start using those tools and formalize a bit your interaction and your collaboration through the GitHub issues. You are also going to have to open GitHub issues on other people's repo. So it can be very easy to get to this point, right? You just contact somebody, you say, you open an issue on my repo, I open an issue on yours, you're done. But hopefully, I mean, this is not just to get the points, right? It's, it's just to, to get started and, and start using the tools. Um, you also need to have issues open on your project by an instructor. Oh, actually, sorry. You need to open your issues yourself, but then tag an instructor for feedback. So that's a very common mechanism in, uh, in GitHub, uh, a little bit like Slack. When you want to ask somebody for help, you tag them in the, in the issue. 
so we, we want you to use that mechanism and so the instructors is going to be assigned to you uh, is an obvious choice but it doesn't have to necessarily be that person you can also tag other people if you think they have relevant skills for example if you start from Jack's tutorial you can definitely tag Jack and I'm uh, sure that Jack will be more than happy to, to help uh, finally, so all those things are like 1%, so we are at 3%, and finally we have a, a short talk uh, where you're going to introduce yourself, and introduce your project, and those will happen Thursday afternoon. Because there are so many students, we cannot really fit all the presentation in one session, so we're going to have two parallel sessions on Thursday afternoon, and uh, you're expected to listen to the other talks, so you know what other people are doing, and also you'll be expected to watch a video of the other session you, you won't be able to attend directly. Uh, and that you can do, you know, maybe in the evening or on Friday morning. And you can also use the accelerated speed replay. So uh, those two hours of presentation, you can probably fit in uh, an hour and a half or even less. Uh, so it's efficient. So those are uh, the, the evaluation. So as I said, I mean, I, I don't really care about grade at the end of the day, but it, those grades are meant to sort of uh, structure a little bit your work and help you, you know, get through those objectives and answer the questions of the of the week. Uh, in terms of next step, so Alexa has posted on general a. I'm just going to try to have the chat open because currently it's uh, closed. So if you have questions, I don't see anything. Okay, I don't know how to open the chat from here. Anyway, Sam, please interrupt me if there are important questions. Uh, so, Alex uh, well, actually, we have one. Okay. How many people can be in a team? There's not really a limit. Uh, we've never done that before. Uh, so if you want to build a mega team, I'm not against it. We'll have to, to chat about it. Basically, the, the only thing that we need to evaluate you personally at the end of the day to give you a grade. Uh, so I'm going to get to the evaluation of the final project in a few slides. But as long as we're able to answer those questions, then we're good. So that means that you're going to have to, in, in the results section, explain what each individual really learned and ideally make links in the deliverables that show that. So if you say, oh, I learned about, and I learn, sure, I can trust your word, or you can put a link to a pull request you've done to the team repo where you were adding an I learn analysis. And then I know you indeed have used and learned to use I learn. So that's the beauty of using a, a framework like GitHub because it tracks what everybody does. Same for the Slack, like you're going to create uh, channels for each project on week three. So we'll have access to those logs as instructors and we can see exactly who did what and said what. So you can even put links uh, to, to that. So the idea is that can you document what you've done to demonstrate you've reached the objectives of the school? And is that the case and you want to have a team of 25 people, that would be Awesome, uh, an epic Brenac School project. Uh, all right, so I hope that answers the question. Alexa shared on general a link of a spreadsheet, a good girl spreadsheet. There are three columns, one with your Slack ID, one with your GitHub ID. If you don't have a GitHub account, create a GitHub account and give us your, uh, your GitHub ID. We need those like now, because we're gonna start inviting you to the GitHub organization. So while we don't have your GitHub ID, we cannot invite you. Uh, finally, uh, we're asking for keywords. So if you have an idea of the general topics you'd like to work on or even specific tools, add all that here. We're gonna use that to pair you with instructors. We're gonna use that to pair you with other uh, students. So obviously, if you, if you put too much, we're gonna be overwhelmed. But if you put too little, we won't know who to pair you with. So use your bad judgment in terms of your choice of keywords. So ideally, you would have done that by you know, 11 at the latest, because between 11 and 12, we need to create the teams and we need to do the pairings. So we need to be able to start working uh, at 11 uh, so that everything is ready by one when we start you know, having, having the meetings. 
Um, so as soon as we have your GitHub IDs, we're going to invite you to the, to the GitHub organization. Right away, create a repo. In the, the repo name, try to put your uh, ID in it. So it's easy for us to track what your project is. You can also uh, change the name of the repo down the road to uh, add a, a cool ID that sort of summarize what the project's about. Uh, but it's not necessary at this stage. You can also, uh, GitHub repo, they have uh, keywords attached to them. So you can change the keywords of the repo to match what's in the spreadsheet. And you can start creating this readme file and, and start actually filling it right away. Uh, I've put the link here of the template. So all you have to do is create the template, uh, uh, co copy it, add it to your repo, and start editing it. So even if it's uh, preliminary, it doesn't matter because the truth is that that's a, a basis for the discussion you're going to have to with, in the afternoon with the instructor and your peers. So it's kind of a mini presentation. You're, you're starting right there. So uh, ideally, by the end of the morning, you would have your repo and your readme file kind of in shape. Obviously, you're going to work on it for the full week, but it wouldn't be empty and it wouldn't be just like the, the, the default text. So this afternoon, uh, you're gonna, I think over lunch, you, that spreadsheet we shared, we're gonna add columns and you're gonna know who's your instructor, at what time you're meeting the instructor, you're gonna know who's, um, who's your teams. Uh, so you'll have to start connecting with them through Slack and uh, deciding you know, uh, uh, how you will meet. As, no, as soon as you know who is your, in your team, go check out their GitHub repo because hopefully now they're filled, right? And uh, so you can already know kind of who they are and what they want to do and things like that. And then you will have a more productive discussion in the afternoon. Now, if you don't have time or if you're lost, no problem. You just ask, yeah, where is it? And people tell you, and if they are not ready, they haven't created the materials, they can always explain to you uh, just talking, but this is less efficient. And we're trying to be very efficient here. So try to get this material ready in, in, in time. Um, so while you have this little uh, project clinic, I think it's very important to not be too uh, you know, focused on, oh my God, uh, I have to make this presentation and such. So just take your time, uh, especially with the peers, you have a full hour. So you know, maybe take 10 minutes or so to introduce yourself, discuss a little bit of your experience so far in the school, and, uh, and just informally discuss your, your, your objectives and things like that. So we're thinking about creating teams of three to four students. So there should be plenty of time for everybody to, to, to present their stuff, essentially. You know, 15 to 20 minutes per person. Uh, and also this may be the, the time where you start saying, oh, you know, you could do that. I'm gonna create an issue on your repo. So maybe you can uh, nail down those 3% GitHub issues already this afternoon and uh, that's, that's done. Uh, so next steps on Wednesday and Thursday. Well, you, you have to flesh out your, your GitHub repo. Uh, obviously, uh, you're, every day you're gonna follow up with your team and, and contribute to help them build their projects. Uh, but you should also be on the lookout for the Brenac organization. You should uh, check all the other repos and start to see, oh my God, this project looks so cool and you know, would make sense with mine. Maybe we could work together on something. Like don't hesitate, just contact people. If you want to switch teams also, we could arrange that quite early in the week if necessary, you know, it's, it's, it's quite fluid. Um, uh, you, you could, uh, and also you're gonna have to start uh, preparing a, a small presentation so the presentation will happen through Zoom. So you'll be able to just, uh, you know, share your screen so you can use whatever medium uh, you want. I personally really like if the presentation is uh, uh, shareable. So either uh, uh, Google Slides like I do, or uh, if, you, if you have, uh, actually you can just present your Markdown. If your Markdown has lots of images, you can treat it as a presentation. Some people have already started using like notebooks with uh, the slide mode in the notebook. Uh, you know, whatever works for you, but uh, things that can be shared and copied and evolved are better. 
and uh, PowerPoint slides just don't fit that bill. The PowerPoint slide typically break other people's computer and they're very obnoxious. Uh, here I said it. Um, but if, you, you know, if you're familiar with, with PowerPoint or Keynote, I think it's Mac equivalent, of course you can use that and, and, and that's great. Uh, on Friday, on Friday, everybody will have given his little five minute speech, right? So you will have been in a session, you will have seen all of those. Uh, we will have shared the YouTube video with the other session and uh, hopefully you have watched it. So by now, you know who everybody in the school is doing and uh, you should be in, uh, in the mode of like, do I want to run solo on this? Because you know I want to work on my PhD data and that's really what I want to push and that's fine. Or uh, maybe you decide I, that'd be super cool to work with so and so. So then in the afternoon, uh, you reach out and you create the small groups. You also welcome to invite instructors so they can participate in the discussion. We'll try to pick in what's going on. So uh, potentially we can also us suggest, you know, it doesn't make sense that there's two teams here. You could at least share that part of the work uh, and do some kind of a meta team only for one part of the project. Uh, so hopefully by Friday afternoon, you know what you're gonna be working on and, and you know who you're gonna be working on, right? So then then week, week one is a wrap. Uh, I, I just wanted to have a, a brief description here of uh, what the final project evaluation is gonna be like, because uh, I understand it may be also, uh, you may be a bit lost because you, you don't know what's actually expected for the project itself down the road. I think, I mean, Isabel's great presentation should have given you a, a good idea by now. But really, uh, at the end of week four, you'll give another presentation. They'll be slightly longer. Um, and uh, w what we, we ask you to outline during these presentations is how you applied the open science best practices to make your science more reproducible, uh, what skills and what technology you learned. So typically in Isabel's uh, talk, you saw, oh, here's what I knew at the beginning of Brenac School and here's where I am uh, at the end. So that's something we, we ask every student to do. Uh, and, and then you know, we'll be looking in the deliverables for proof that that's indeed the case. Uh, so that's essentially how we attribute the points. <clears throat> now there are some points in terms of relevance to brand science I have to say it's not our primary or even an important criteria, but uh, we do look at, at the end of the day, is the project cool or not? Um, uh, it's just a fraction of the, of the grade, but uh, there are some points for that as well. And finally, obviously the clarity of the material in the presentation. So that includes both your slides, how you present your slides, and for the written report, you know, your markdown could document or all your notebooks, are they clearly done? So that's just an outline. So if you, if you go uh, look on the website now, there's this project guide uh, document and uh, in it you have the, the breakdown of the different uh, criterions, criteria with uh, examples and, and how, how many points were assigned to those different criteria. So hopefully that gives you a, a clear idea of, you know, if, if you are taking the credits for the course and you want to get a good grade, here are the boxes you need to check. Now, those are tools to help you learn. Don't get too focused on getting a good grade. If you do the job well, you're gonna get an awesome grade. Okay, this is a graduate level course. There's no, um, we don't need to have a ma maximum average. <laughs> so I don't care. As far as I'm concerned, everybody can get 100% on this course if, uh, if everybody does a great job. Uh, but really, like we've designed the evaluation in a way we hope is actually helping you understand how the school is structured and, 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 and do your project and learn. So even if you're not taking the, the course for credit, hopefully you can use those as guidelines and, and, uh, and, and that's gonna be useful for you as well. So that's that. In terms of this slide, I showed it uh, last week, the Slack completely central, I, I, I mean, I think everybody's on the Slack, otherwise you wouldn't even have the Zoom link today. Uh, you can still tweet about the school at uh, the Brand Art School uh, hashtag, 
uh, to share your experience uh, so far in the school, what you'll be working on, things like that. Uh, it is very useful, I think, for uh, people to get visibility. Maybe they've heard about the Brain Act School, but they don't know exactly what it is. So this kind of uh, testimonials actually are great for people to get a better feel of what it is to be inside the Brain Act School. We can also kind of refer to it maybe in the, in the following years, we'll be able to have kind of a testimonials uh, page linking to different uh, uh, tweets. So I would encourage you doing that uh, very much so. And uh, finally, uh, here's the URL of the uh, GitHub organization for the next three weeks. Uh, I would encourage bookmarking it. Uh, we're we're going to pin it in the general channel so it's easy to, to find if you ever lose it. Uh, once again, distributed exercise uh, last, last week where uh, it was driven by the McGill site. Uh, this week is uh, driven by University of Montreal. I'm at the psychology department that hosts a project course for UDM uh, attached to Brenac School. I'm also at the CRUGM, which is a, a geriatric research institute. I'm actually the director of the imaging unit, unit there. Uh, now, I have to say that some of the, of the folks, uh, actually Sam Gay, who's been very, very involved uh, in organizing uh, Brenac School at Large this week, is uh, also at the psychology department, but he's not at the RGM, uh, and uh, he's at Sacré-Cœur, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Sam. And Ale Alexa Pichabinet is also uh, one of the main organizers for the week, and uh, she's at the Douglas Hospital, McGill University. Uh, she's in the Sylvia Vilna's lab. So, uh, and, and the weeks after we're going to rotate, but hopefully, you know, everybody stays involved. So you're, the instructors that follow you this week will be at the minimum still, you'll still be able to contact them through Slack. And uh, several of them are actually going to stay for week three and week four. So there won't be too much turnover. And uh, I'll be there for the full four weeks. So don't hesitate to, to reach out as well. Um, so happy hacking. <laughs>